Kyle, I'm going to give you a little bit of a short lecture on phylogenetics. And just the very beginning of thinking about organismal relationships. We're going to think a lot more about organismal relationships um, later on when we're thinking about diversity. But I want to give you like a couple of sort of big picture things to look for. So to understand phylogenetics, I want to look at a group that you're probably more familiar with, and that is going to be the vertebrates. Okay, I want to focus on these because I really want to show you how we represent relationships in biology between different species. And um, this is kind of a nice group to look at because I think you already have a pretty good idea um, kind of what counts as a vertebrate. So when we're talking about um, making trees and understanding relationships, one big thing we want to think about are clades, which are sometimes called monophyletic clades. And these are groups of organisms that include the most recent common ancestor of a group plus all of the descendants of that ancestor. So they include an ancestor and all, all of the descendants. Okay, so the ancestor and all its descendants. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So um, first for the vertebrates, I wanna zoom in on one particular vertebrate group. And that one particular vertebrate group, that's gonna be the mammals. So like many groups of organisms, we classify the mammals by their shared and derived characters. So shared and derived characters. Let me just put a little box over this so that it doesn't get lost. So I have my kind of double definition of clade over here. Okay, so this is called a synapomorphy. A synapomorphy is a shared and derived character. I'll say characteristic. That defines a group. And we'll be even more specific, it defines a clade. Okay, that's a synapomorphy. Mammals have three synapomorphies. They have, obviously, mammary glands. That's what they're named after. At least some members of a species will have mammary glands, obviously. Males tend not to in mammals. They also have three inner ear bones. and they have fur or hair at some point in their life, okay? So some examples of mammals would be things like humans, squirrels, whales, dogs, wolves, um, monkeys, all of those are different kinds of mammals and they all have these characteristics, but you might have noticed one on here. It's a little bit weird for fur, whales. Whales don't really have fur as adults, but when they are in utero, that is when they're developing as fetuses, they do have hair and they lose it um, pretty early on. So they're born usually without fur or hair. So they do have fur during one point in their life, um, but then they lose it. Okay, so those are characteristics of mammals. Okay. Now, if I want to think about this as what we call a nested hierarchy, I'm going to put all of our mammals in a circle and I'm actually going to uh, I'm just going to write mammals on here. I had another idea and then I decided against it because it'll make everything confusing. Mammals. Okay, that looks right. All right, so this is my mammals. And in this circle are all of the different mammals. So, for example, the whales, the humans, the dogs, the cats, the squirrels, the mice. Everything, you know, furry and fuzzy, cows, all that's in here in our little group of mammals. But what about if we want to kind of go bigger out? So is there a group that all the mammals belong to that other animals are also within? Sure, there are the tetrapods. 
and our tetrapods are our four-legged vertebrates. So all mammals fall within the tetrapod group, but the tetrapod group contains other things, for example, um, lizards, snakes, turtles, amphibians, all of those are different um, types of tetrapods. And our tetrapods have the characteristic of having four limbs, except for the snake. So tetrapods can actually lose limbs. There's another clade, the Sicilians, that have also lost their limbs. But in general, tetrapods are gonna have four limbs or else they lost them in evolution. Um, and they're gonna uh, be vertebrates. So they'll have all the characteristics of vertebrates, which we'll talk about in a second. And they also have lungs and they have a neck. So these are some commonalities among all of these tetrapods. They're synapomorphies that make them into a clade. Okay, what about a bigger group? So something that all the mammals are a part of and all the tetrapods are a part of. So a bigger group that contains all of these, that would be the vertebrates. Okay, so our vertebrates which include the mammals and the tetrapods, they have a vertebral column. They have a dorsal spinal cord. Oops. Um, they have, um, oops, sorry, let me cross that one out. They have a post anal tail. Ours is really short, it's just a couple bones. So they have these characteristics that all make them vertebrates. Okay, and so we can think of some examples of vertebrates that are not mammals and are not tetrapods. So this is gonna include like sharks, rays, um, raven fish. Most of the fish you eat are raven fish. So raven fish, lobefin fish, All of these are different kinds of vertebrates that are not tetrapods or mammals, okay? So this is how we classify them in what we call this nested hierarchy, where each of these circles has a set of characteristics associated with it, okay? So all mammals not only have the mammalian characteristics, but they also have the tetrapod characteristics and the vertebrate characteristics. So sort of the farther out you go, the more characteristics a particular organism has to have. So drawing it in these circles is gonna get really messy really quickly, especially when we consider the fact that the lizards need their own circle, the snakes need their own circle, the amphibians need their own circle. We're just gonna to have too many circles bouncing around in here. And so instead what we do is we represent the same information as a phylogenetic tree. And in this tree, we're gonna put all of the mammals as one branch. Okay, and things like lizards, snakes, so our reptiles, turtles, all of those we're gonna just lump together in another branch over here. And then we'll put the amphibians over here. Okay, so how we read this is that anything that's along a branch, that's a clade, so lakes, lakes, <laughs> lizards, snakes, and turtles, they form a clade. Amphibians form a clade. Mammals form a clade. They all have synapomorphies. And each of these branch points is looking at a last common ancestor. So the last common ancestor to all the tetrapods can be found here. So I'm going to say the last common ancestor or LCA of all tetrapods is right there. And I can draw a line around this to show that everything descended from this last common ancestor forms a clade, okay? I can draw a circle around it. We've gotten all of the descendants of that one particular ancestor, and I didn't have to break any of these lines to do it. So each of these branch points represents speciation. Each of these long lines represents evolutionary time. So all the um, horizontal, or sorry, vertical lines are evolutionary time, OK? 
okay? So I can actually represent that this way over here. <laughs> That's our evolutionary time. All right, so that is our tetrapods and our mammals, and I wanna add in our vertebrate group too. So I'm gonna add in a couple of different fish lineages. It turns out there's at least three. So these are different kinds of fish. These are my ray fins. These are, oh my gosh, I did it all wrong. These are my lobe fins, excuse me. These are my ray fins. There's actually one more fish clade, but I forget the name of them. And then, did I forget the name of them? Okay, we're gonna ignore that. And then these are my um, chondrichthians, so my sharks and rays. Okay, so those are all my different fish. And so if we look at the group that contains the sharks, the rays, the different kinds of fish, the tetrapods, the mammals, we draw a circle around that one. Okay, so we include an ancestor and everything that's descended off of that ancestor, that's gonna be my vertebrates. So here is my, oops, last common ancestor of all vertebrates. And vertebrates form a clade because I can make that circle without cutting through any lines. Now, here's where things get interesting. Usually we consider sharks, rays, raffin fish, and lobefin fish, we consider them all to be fish, right? Fish, fish, fish. But notice that if I try to draw a circle around all of these, there's no way to do it without breaking through lines, okay? So that means it's not a clade. If I go back to the last common ancestor of all of the fish, their last common ancestor is way back here. And that's the last common ancestor of all vertebrates. And so that means that when these, um, when these different groups differentiated from each other, when they evolved away from each other, that was at the advent of the vertebrates when they first split from each other. So that means that these do not form a monophyletic clade, even though they have very similar body plans. They don't share that last common ancestor to the exclusion of all other groups. And that's kind of how we think of just organismal diversity and biodiversity in general. We like to think about it in terms of these nested hierarchies, which we represent as phylogenetic trees.